we go live and we are live we are so live great good afternoon it's one minute to the hour for Tuesday Talks at three. Welcome for joining us today. I've got my guest here with me, Lucy Njeroge, my namesake. Hi, Lucy. Say hi. Hi, Lucy. <laughs> it's so weird to have a Lucy on my Lucy show. So it's good to call it uh, just our Tuesday Talks today. So I'm just going to check my Facebook and uh, see how we are doing here as I kill the volume and just get ready to see that we are live. And yes, we are live. And I see we've already been joined by one Nancy and she's already uh, chatting, uh, not chatting so much, but just being there. Welcome Nancy, good to see you and a happy new year to you and to everybody who will be joining us. You know, January, 2021. Now, now January is a month of new beginnings and uh, transitioning. That's what January is known for every year. However, this particular January is a special one because it is the January of a new decade. Hey. With a new decade. We've got another 10 years ahead of us. And the, the minute, Lucy, that it turned to one, you know, one also be, uh, depicts the beginning of something. Something. Yes. No Very profound. How to count, we say one. And you go on two, mm. three. Mm -hmm. for just basic education. So a lot of good stuff for this January and looking at our past and all the lessons that we have learned in 2020, this is definitely a time for birthing a transformation. What do you think about absolutely, that? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> birthing, I'm loving it. Let's see, Nancy says, happy new 2021 to you too. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, Rhoda is watching us. Aha, uh -huh, nice. So this is great. So we've already got some people with us on the show. And uh, today we are here with my guest, Lucy Njeroge. I will be introducing her a bit later. I've got to talk about myself first. So that, you know, she's such a powerful woman that, you know, there's a danger that as we continue this, you'll all forget about <laughs> LMC consultancy as she takes it away. This is a lifetime girlfriend of mine. So I know her when I'm saying what I'm saying. So, <laughs> so I am happy to have her here and to have all of you here. Welcome to Tuesday Talks at Three, a platform for women to help one another in our daily journey as we go through the sphere of life, the wheel of life, as we go through life as we know it. And you know, life happens while you're making plans. It just happens. Absolutely. So there we were last year making great plans. And then life happened in the form of the pandemic. And you and your plans, we all know what happened to that. You had to continue with life. You know, we are stronger. We are out of it. We're in a transformational year. We are claiming. So my name is Lucy McCredis, as you can see on the screen. I am the founder of LMC Consultancy. And I'm an expert in helping women get unstuck and onto their true potential through unlocking their limiting beliefs. And talking about limiting beliefs, I have a program I'm running. In fact, it was just literally an hour ago that I was in class talking about limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs, just as it says, limits you. In the end, you want to achieve something, but because of this limiting belief, you're unable to see the other side. It mm -hmm. could be fear, it could mm -hmm. be procrastination, it yes. could be your own self-talk, you know, mm -hmm. your own self-talk needs to be rewired, your narrative needs to change, I'm not good at this, I'm, I'm too old, oh, I'm, a, I'm <clears throat> those women are career women, so they are better than me, who am I to speak up, I have no experiences, I have no education, no qualifications, these are limiting beliefs, I tell you. So yes, I am an expert in helping you unlock these limiting beliefs. We help you to identify them through some exercises and you can always come back to them. They are tested. Doesn't mean that those limiting beliefs will disappear from your life. They will come in because they are a mechanism in your brain to protect you. Yeah. That is why you have those limiting beliefs beliefs. Your brain is there to protect you first until you teach it something new, new. consciously 
And then mm-hmm. it keeps you there, it protects you with that. So this is what I do. So I'm a certified life coach. And that means that I can take you online virtually and give you an engaging uh, session as you're learning things. I'm a mentor. Mentor in hospitality specifically, Mm because this is where I've been for 30 years. And I am a certified life coach. This is what I do. This is what I do. Thank you so much for being with me here on my broadcast. In LMC Consultancy, we have a few services. One is a group life coaching. Now, group life coaching is exactly that. It's a group. And Mm -hmm. we bring in some people. So in this case, I bring in a minimum of three and a maximum of five so that we can have an optimal experience. You know, like now, Lucy and I, we are lifetime friends. I mean, put us in a room to chat. You would not hear us for the noise. But I tell you, we are communicating. Now, <laughs> Absolutely. This, <laughs> true, eh? So this, this is not a mix that you will put in a room, just the two of us. You've got to throw in other personalities into the room, you know? And then because of the experiences that we both bring to the table, we can bounce off each other, we can learn. You know what, Lucy? We can unlearn. Yes. Unlearn to learn. These are one of the things that I learned in a huge way in 2020, to Mm. unlearn. So that I could mm. learn. I just needed to empty out my cup so I could fill it up. Fill it again, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and for that, I, I recognize that God was working in a great way in my life, that He was helping me. He was sending people my way to help me. And I gave each and every one of them thanks in my December gratitude. So I've got the group life coaching. When you come together, it is uh, issues that we are all addressing every day in our journey of life. When we break Mm -hmm. it down, it's just that we are bouncing off each other and therefore we get a better experience. Then there's one-on-one coaching where it's just you and I Mm -hmm. on this screen and we carry that through. All sessions are six. On one particular subject, we sign a contract. Then Mm -hmm. online facilitation like I'm doing now or like the trainings that I'm doing this week. This week, my training is the awakening self. And the awakening self is not only about limiting beliefs, you know, it's about you awakening to yourself, what is rich about you and what you can bring to the table. It's about you. It's not about anybody else. So you may say, so-and-so thinks this about me. The world thinks this about me. What do you think about yourself? And how are you feeling from there? The self-love, the Mm self-worth. So important. You have spent so much time with yourself during this pandemic that you came to realize that you can actually keep yourself company. So you have to love yourself. Mm -hmm. If you don't love yourself, Lucy, then what are we doing? How do you expect me to love you, to appreciate you when you're always looking for validation from other people? You didn't put yourself first. It is not selfish to put yourself first. Even in an aircraft, when they get go through the, the what do you call it, the on mm-hmm. instructions, they tell mm-hmm. you that you put on the mask first on you and then on anybody else, even with your child next to you. You have got to put on your mask first. Why? It's not a selfish mood. M- mode. It's about you being in a stronger position to help mm-hmm. or love yourself. Yeah. So this is what I do on online facilitation. Then I've got lady in waiting and I smile with lady in waiting because I love it. I had my hardest lessons as a teenager. That's a story for another day. One day when I write my book, I had the hardest lessons as a teenager. And it was about lessons of wanting to fit in. And that is where my hardest lessons came, came into play. And I didn't know it until I became a young adult and I, I left home and then I became a wife, I became a mother. It's when I realized that those indeed were lessons. So I purposed that I'm going to reach out to teenage girls and be able to give them an experience where they could actually express what they were feeling. And I could share with them, true mm-hmm. story, you know, without beating about the bush, true story. Mm-hmm. So lady in waiting, I birthed that lady in waiting idea and I love it. We go through eight sessions and that is, we cover the art of good manners, my father, <laughs> good manners. I think that was his middle name. So the art of good manners, 
Mm-hmm. And then etiquette, you know, just, mm-hmm. just etiquette, whether it is etiquette in social etiquette, business etiquette, dining etiquette. And now we've introduced social media etiquette. The girls just love me when we talk social media etiquette until I tell them about those pictures they post and those stories they write. And those people <laughs> keep on following, you know. <laughs> Stalking. Start, you know, they start turning off their videos, you know. <laughs> Okay, girls, back on, you know? So yeah, social media, they love the fact that I acknowledge it's a great platform because unfortunately as parents, we talk about social media in the negative and we need Mm -hmm. to change our narrative. Hey man, we are in virtual world, now we are digital. So those are the services that I do and why am I an expert? As I explained, hospitality industry, been there 30 years. Women helped me to get to the position that I am today, whether in a good way or in a bad way, they Mm -hmm. were in and so I turned back and helped women also uh, become better in this thing that we called hospitality but COVID slapped us and we were down flat now when COVID happened a lot of things then were set into motion and for me it disrupted my journey I was on the fast lane I knew I had arrived and I knew my purpose I knew my potential and I'm those people there I am self-motivating. You know, Lucy? Yes, I know you. (laughs) So when I decide I'm going for something, you know, I'm going. And that highway, you know, don't come there and tell me we are changing lanes. What are we changing? So we decided. We're going. We're going. (laughs) So COVID came and told me there was no lane. The road just cut off. And that was not a good time for me. So I had to repurpose, realign, rethink. You know, the beautiful thing, Lucy, that I discovered, mm-hmm. I discovered that my purpose was still the same. And my purpose was to help build one another. The purpose I was Lucy. the same. And I got a little flicker, like, you know, that, that little flicker in, in coal. Mm-hmm. And uh, from my activities, I started to blow into this coal. Yeah. And I then, you know, like now you start your car to go out to Naivasha or to Mombasa and you realize one road is closed. Now you've got to circumvent and go. That's what I did. I got back onto my horse by the grace of God mm-hmm. and I took a different route. My journey changed. But again, it birthed this potential. And the potential that I'm running right now is the awakening self. It's the things that, the things that I learned about myself during this mm-hmm. time. And I thought I would share with women because like I say, I'm an expert in helping women get unstuck. I needed to get stuck first yes. to understand and to be compassionate. Well, mm-hmm. we have Jane here joining us. Happy New Year to you too. Pauline, Happy New Year. Great to see you. Susan, whoa, Susan. Well, I am so happy to see you, Susan. Thank you so much for joining. And then we've got Sheila and Sheila says, hi there, Lucy and Lucy. Hi, Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> and she's anticipating a wonderful session today. And Jane says, well done for getting back to your journey. Thank you so much, Jane. It was actually very hard to do that. But once I got back onto the journey, the momentum just built up and voila, I am here with you now. I found my voice. I am now owning my voice. And I'm on the journey of embracing this voice. And voice here, I mean my message, my medium, not so much what I'm talking, but mm-hmm. my, my message and my medium. I am here on Facebook. I'm there on IG. I mean, I'm in LinkedIn. What message am I giving out there? So I invite you all to be part of this. Please like our page for the opportunity to join our community. Now, our, our community is called We Are Connected. And We Are Connected allows you to be able to chat with us. eh? Please Mm -hmm. share with us your story. Don't hold your story back, ladies. Somebody somewhere is waiting to hear your story. I mean, what do you think about that, Lucy? Holding back stories. I think um, we've reached a point where whatever you're holding back will kill you. Truthfully, when you, we, we had this conversation when we were preparing for today. And we were discussing our journey. I mean, for a little bit, we kind of became moms and wives and we reconnected again. And our reconnection was about where we had been, where we are, truthfully and sincerely, and where we're going. And it was one of those conversations where you're liberated. I mean, you realize I'm not alone in this journey. 
And while somebody else's story is a little different, it makes, it, it really gives you a boost to energy. And I will also just digress a little bit and say something, Lucy. I watched you grow <laughs> from school uniform to today. But, Are we um, going? Are we seriously going there? No, no, no it's a good thing. Okay. But, um, okay. It's a very good thing. Okay. And when you said, I found my voice, it took me very quickly to who I remember you as in high school. You were in the choir, you were in the plays. And later when we got married and had children and I reconnected with you, you were going, you were acting in some play in Brayburn. You had a voice. Yes. It's just that now you've you know, directed it to growth, to effective service and to the place that God intended you to be from the first place. So your voice was always finding a way to get out. And I am so proud of you. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. I would never have, I would never have made that connection. But yes, I, I hear myself in the words that you were saying. And, mm -hmm. and just like in today's session, when we were speaking with the ladies, I, I was like, it's about you and what you perceive about yourself. Now, what somebody else says is different. Now, here you are, Lucy, telling me something about myself that I had parked, you know, mm -hmm. literally yeah. parked. And that's really not part of my life. I am going ahead with other perceptions. So you have brought back this particular persona that is me. And you I am always sure looking you're... for your voice, always. Yes. Now yes. it has a purpose. Isn't that amazing? And, and now I just said today that uh, I, I realized my purpose was still the same, helping to build one another. And I found, oh, thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. I see Monica. Monica has joined us. Wow, glad to see you here, Monica. Monica took us through amazing uh, festive decorating in wow. December. Oh, beautiful. Thank you for joining, Monica. Then we've got Sheila saying, let us all find our voices. Oh yes, Sheila, let us mm -hmm. all find our voices and let mm -hmm. our voices be a blessing yes. to others. Let mm -hmm. us leave a legacy mm -hmm. because when we are gone, let people say, that mm -hmm. I am a relative of, I am a yes. byproduct of, I am a mentee of, mm -hmm. and these are the things that I was taught. If I, I keep on repeating things that people have taught me over the years. Thank you for saying that, Sheila. Susan says, it's about completely refusing to give up despite all the challenges. Everyone has a journey. So true, Susan. Mm -hmm. I am of the school of thought that failure mm -hmm. is an option. We must fail so that we can stand up, dust ourselves off, move on with new experiences and learnings. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. Quitting is not yeah. an option. Mm -hmm. There are many ways to skin a cat. Mm -hmm. uh, Sheila says, well said Lucy in Jaroge about always looking for our voice and finding the purpose for it. Thank you so much for being engaging. Let's keep it going today. We are talking about the things that we love doing and getting paid for it. So 2020 opened up our eyes. At least it did for me. This was the year when I realized that what we refer to as side hustles need to be taken mm -hmm. very seriously. I mean, mm -hmm. guys were surviving on side hustles, whether it was you were cooking, baking, cleaning, whether you were doing services for people. I see Jane has just gone there, no quitting. I mean, what Jane does also, all uh -huh. of it online. I mean, the things that people did to survive their hustles are real. Well, mm. Ikigai is a Japanese tool. Ikigai, a Japanese tool, that tool just clicked for me. It says it is the reason for being, the reason mm -hmm. you wake up in the morning, you know, wake up. So yeah. The reason to, to get on with your life. Ikigai yeah. is perfect for this. Huh? It mm -hmm. has four quadrants, Lucy, and mm -hmm. they Wine like four circles yes. and take this sweet spot right in the middle. Yes. Mm -hmm. This sweet spot in the middle is where you find fulfillment. Mm -hmm. you know? These mm -hmm. side hustles have a very fundamental space in Ikigai because mm -hmm. one of the quadrants is about doing the things that you love. Yes. Let's talk mm -hmm. about Ikigai in a moment. Well, so one of these quadrants about doing the things that you love is a beautiful quadrant. And mm -hmm. since January is associated with beginnings and transitions, mm -hmm. and 
we have therefore dubbed it January fulfillment. And for me, Lucy, you are the, you know, the epitome of fulfillment. For the longest time, I've always known you to do this thing for yourself. Whether you called it a side hustle or a business, you always were doing it for yourself. Very scary because the rest of us were in corporate world getting salaries, but there you were doing this, yeah? So I'm going to introduce you. Well, this is Lucy Njeroge and she is a friend of mine, a lifelong friend of mine. I have known Lucy for eons. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how many. That no, no, we're people. not going there. <laughs> we're not going there. However, I, I must say that this is one of the two guests to my show since I started in 2020 that I have met and I have a relationship with. Everybody else has been online. And Monica is here and she can attest to that, that she came on to Tuesday Talks at 3 and we've never Met. So I introduce Lucy Njeroge to you. She specializes in helping entrepreneurs birth their dreams. I love that. Birth their dreams by creating simple and yet effective systems, effective systems to ensure profitability and efficiency. Those are beautiful business words. Yeah. She is an administrative professional. She offers smart support. And listen to these guys. I love this when she shared it. She refers to herself as a business dream nanny. A business dream nanny. Wow, I just love it. So we would love to hear what you have to say about the things that you love, but we want to thank Lucy so much for taking her time to come on to Tuesday Talks at three to share with us. So Lucy, we're gonna jump right into it. We're just Absolutely. gonna jump right into it. Your yeah. choice of work. How did you arrive at it. Wow. <laughs> okay, so um, if you remember, we came from the school of thought that there were very clear professions you could enter into. Okay. Yep. You were either the doctor, the lawyer, the accountant, the teacher, yes. or the secretary. <laughs> yes. So with those options, I, I trained as a, uh, as a secretary and it was okay. Got my whatever, my paperwork, got my family and worked for a while, then moved to Nairobi. We used to live in Mombasa, moved to Nairobi and discovered, hey, this is a rat race. Nobody was stopping for you. You can write a, th <laughs> you write a thousand letters of application. Forget even getting a regret, nothing. So now you really start leaning on hookups. You start looking yeah. for who do I know? What was Lucy McCready's Lucy number? What was who's whatever, can I reconnect with them? And that was hard because even reconnecting you, you're looking at Lucy looking like this successful corporate woman and you don't tell her you're, you're, you're tamaki. <laughs> oh dear. Of course not. You're like, oh yeah, even me, I've started a business. <laughs> so, so that was, first of all, that left me flat footed and it took a bit of my confidence because you're thinking, wow, I was doing so well. I had climbed the real ranks of secretarial and admin and suddenly I am in the masses and not just in the masses, but with a different generation. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're the oldest in that pole yes. waiting room. <laughs> yes. That, oh yeah, that took a lot out of me. But like you said, you have to recalibrate. And I think for me, I've always understood my purpose or whatever it was, whatever I was going to do in life, I was always going to be a conduit. Yeah. It was never going to be about me. I was always going to do something as a channel for the next person. So okay. um, somebody hooked me up with a job which was a, an NGO job with, um, I think it was just for like three months. I ended up working there for a year and then funding ended. What do you do? And you're being told, hey, you've got three days and you go home. It took the wind out of me. So yeah. somehow I ended up with an extra month and all I did was Google what happens when you leave work. I couldn't imagine being labeled as a retiree. <laughs> I couldn't even... <laughs> I couldn't see how I was going to start like a small biashar. It just was not coming together. But in that whole space, and I think also just trusting and releasing to God, for me anyway, I found I knew what I do well. I love order. I love organized things. I love simplicity. In fact, I think my mom has always complained how I never wear floral things. Not because, I just find them busy. So I like, <laughs> so I like <laughs> So, um, Long story short, 
I discovered, oh, there's such a thing as a, um, a virtual assistant. Yes. And I thought this can work. Started it. And Sheila, I know you're listening. You were my PA. <laughs> The best I've ever known, in case you didn't know. <laughs> oh, wow. Did you hear that, Sheila? You were her PA. She was, and she, honestly, she's one of those people you always attribute any success you've had. She literally carried yeah. me. I, she gave me the position of being a boss, but we digress. I'll tell you that, Sheila, later. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so we started, I, you don't have resources. You don't have clients. I didn't have anything except an idea. That was all I had that I could do this. It made sense. So I registered a business name. In those days, it was so easy to register a business name. Yeah. Um, my company was then called the Finer Things Company. Yeah. And uh, I got, I, a friend of mine introduced me to an incubation space that was being run by IFC. Yeah. And all I had on me was 15,000 shillings. No laptop, no internet, nothing. Oh, and a huge box of stationery. I love stationery. So I checked into, so they told me, okay, no, actually the rent will be 30K and I only had 15. So I told them not to worry, I'll come in on the 15th. So I entered on the 15th and spent the whole first two days arranging my stationery. I put it in the drawers, I tidied up my table and I told God, okay, here we go. The very next day, the first client checked in. Wow. With my next month's rent. There was no looking back. The NGO I had worked for called me. Can you do part-time gigs for us with events and everything? I never looked back till today. Wow. Isn't that just amazing? Because I'm hearing that you only started off with, with, with an idea. Yes. That's what just you started. An idea. You had, uh, you had no resources apart from your stationery. <laughs> My stationery. <laughs> <laughs> you had no resources. Clearly, this stationery is very important to you because of what you do. You love order mm. so if anything was going to come at you you need to be ready to document it and if you just hold press there we see that Modeu has joined us uh Modeu Marenga great to see you here Modeu welcome we are talking about doing things that we love and getting paid and my guest today is Lucy Njoroge she is a, a you know, she's a business dream business nanny I mean the the name itself has just blown my mind yeah she's your business dream nanny how you know how beautiful is that so lucy's just walking us through her choice of work and and if i just um summarize what you've said to us mm -hmm. you have talked about making the most with what you have absolutely you've alluded to age you've alluded to something else like sitting in an area and uh, you're not sure what's going to happen to you at this point, but you didn't give up. No. And I love what Jane here is saying on, on, on the chat. She's saying no quitting. There was no quitting. People quit on you. A yes. job came to an end. There yes. was loss that you experienced at that point. But what you did is you made the most with what you have, you had in your hand, a virtual assistant. Yeah. Who would have thought about a virtual assistant. Jane here says, that is amazing, Lucy Njoroge. You believed in yourself. Great, yes, you believed in yourself. You took what you had, you, you spent two days setting up your drawers. <laughs> Missionary. <laughs> I always say to my son that um, uh, when you have opportunity meeting preparedness, people yes. like to say, oh, you're so lucky. It's not about luck. Mm -hmm. It's opportunity that meets preparedness. So you were so prepared and then opportunity knocked on the door and you opened and you got your first client. You know, yes. how profound is that? Abdallah Nyambok, great to see you. Karibu, Karibu Sana. So you went on and you had no resources. What were the risks, Lucy? What were the wow. risks? <laughs> wow. Um, first of all, you can imagine, you imagine everyone's going to laugh at you. So there was that whole... Yeah, I mean, you just think, you start, you're always thinking about what other people think. Yes, and I yes. remembered whose plate or whose table I have to fill. So it didn't really matter what you thought of me. Yeah. And um, so first of all, there was that risk of, I've spent two days organizing stationery and then nobody comes. <laughs> After two weeks, I'm gonna to have to close this office. <laughs> so that was, that was terrifying. Then yeah. it was also, okay, first of all, it was a 
accelerated learning curve. Suddenly I had to learn how to, you know, when you worked in a corporate space, you're always being, you, you take your laptop to the IT room, you take your, whatever it is, your uh, petty cash vouchers, whatever, you never have to do it yourself. But suddenly I had to do everything myself and Sheila. We had to suddenly start learning how to do the process, which now got me into this, the journey I'm on right now. But I realized it's so easy. Well, I digress, but let me continue with that. I think is we'll get to that point later. But there was a risk of humiliation, of failure. I guess that's what it is, failure. Yes. Um, my husband was like, so you just get a job. And I'm like, do you know how long I've, I've time <laughs> for that <laughs> job? And then I was also afraid that I wouldn't meet my clients' um, expectations. Yeah. That terrified me. I kept thinking, will I have to give back money? Will I be able to do what I need to do? Oh, yes. No. Yes. Yes. No. You know, when, when you're in, a, in, a, in an office setup that's already working, these things never cross your mind until it's now your responsibility. So that so, was... <laughs> well, thank you for sharing those. What about rejection? Did you think about rejection? So how about, I'm a very noisy person, as you know, but I am... <laughs> uh -huh. But I'm terribly shy about that word marketing. Oh. I, I would hide behind the door. And I would like, up until today, I mean, I'd rather find another way to get the business, but just going and putting myself out there still yeah. terrifies me. Yeah. But somehow God just orchestrated it. I think he knew how much I could take. So he, mm. the network that I already had that was growing kept giving me referrals. I mean, and I guess because you would do a good job, it would be referred. So a lot of my business has been repeat clients and referrals. So a good network. That is amazing. I mean, Susan here comments and says, listening to Lucy and Jaroge brings so much to mind. I think what stops many people from even starting what they love is the simple fear of failure. Oh, yes, yes. The yeah. simple fear of failure. Worrying about things you cannot control, past mm -hmm. mistakes, comparing yourself to others. That's a big one. Susan, yeah. thank you. Comparing yourself to others. That's a big one. And just so many things. But one must move forward despite. Thank you so much for sharing that, Susan. I mean, the failure is in there. Things you cannot control is in there. You know, there's something that I learned uh, during um, this 2020, and I really became intimate with it, is the locus of control, your locus of control, whether it's internal, or whether it's external. What kind of person are you? Do you then feel you have to be in control of everything? Or are you the one who believes it's all about somebody else? When, when something did not happen right, it's about somebody else. Um, and just going through that gave me aha moments and I felt that I fell somewhere in between. But that locus of control, when you lose control, you know, if you are somebody who is really highly rated mm -hmm. as someone who takes control of your life the yeah. minute control is taken away from you things like depression anxiety they just step in it paralyzes because, you yes it paralyzes because you don't know how not to be in control now yeah. someone has taken it away so when covid happened you know many strong-willed people mm -hmm. went into depression went to the depression and if they did not have a support system to lift them out of this depression that is where they still are and when you hold back your voice your message sharing with people your experiences you are not helping those of us who are in depression those mm -hmm. of us going through anxiety we need to know that another woman just like me another human being just like me another spouse a father a brother mm -hmm. they did so thank you so much for sharing that. A jail of all trades, Lucy. A jail of all trades is what you have to become when you start your own work. And this really is yes. true for me. So a jail of all trades. So you learned to be the accountant. You learned to be the IT person. You learned to be the driver. Uh, <laughs> Let me just interrupt you tell you something. How I remembered it was a trick we learned. Many of us one-man shows. So the phone rings and you pick up on one side and you say, hello, the Finding Things Company. And can I speak to you, Lucy Jorge? One moment, please. Hello, this is... 
We are creating the ambience. <laughs> we are setting the stage. <laughs> I love this. Oh, it's, it's great fun to have you here with us. So we were just talking about your choice of words so that we could be able to share with the mm -hmm. people out there that it's just about starting. And I love that you had an idea and that's all you had. Just an, apart from your stationery, you had an idea. You had no resources. None. You took the first step. And from there you learned as you went. You didn't need to know. Now, you know, Lucy, I am a perfectionist. I am the person before COVID, if my ducks were not in a row, I'm not we're doing done. it. <laughs> done. If my ducks were not in a row aligned to success, forget it, you're wasting my time. Today, you have one duck, you have one duck, let's go. We will get the other ducks. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I have grown leaps and bounds, and I'm not even ashamed to say that in the year of Corona, I have grown faster and better than I have in my entire corporate mm -hmm. life. I have mm -hmm. come to know myself. Yeah. We are told when it comes to self-awareness mm -hmm. that 90% of us are not self-aware. It's only 10%. The rest of us are just thinking. <laughs> are we thinking, oh, we're just musing? <laughs> Oh, you're, not, you're not self-aware at all. It's only 10%. So you want to be part of that 10%. I am growing into self-awareness, a kind of person that I am. There are still days when I'm not able to just break through that ceiling, but I am a work in progress. So we can see here Jane saying, I like that. Sheila says, opportunity and effort will overcome the risk of failing. Very true, very true to a great extent. And that is why you find people who have action, goal-driven lives. Mm -hmm. They are able to achieve more than the person who wakes up and waits for that coconut to fall on their head because you don't have a game plan. Yeah, You want a game plan just like you did in your business. The game plan then comes in. You learn as you go mm -hmm. from mistakes, you get stronger mm -hmm. and stronger and stronger. You fail, you get up. You do not quit. You just change mm -hmm. the route that you're taking. Oh, I'm loving this. Susan says, I think Lucy Macridis is because we seek so much approval. Oh, wow, Susan, yeah. you went there. You <laughs> went there. Validation. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. Validation. Mm -hmm. Wow. So when we're starting our own businesses, we're waiting for people to say, oh, you're doing so great. I'm going to bring that. Then you find that you're alone. Nobody but they don't support you. Yep. Nobody yep. is supporting you. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, but I tell you, I tell you, Lucy, that the day you become a success, you hear somebody say, oh, I know Susan Waringa. We I come know. from way back. <laughs> I can hook you up with her. Hello, where were you when I needed you? When you mm -hmm. could have just come and just stood by me and done a lot of nothing but stood by me. I was alone. And yeah. today, when I've got people really wanting to share my airspace, <laughs> but, you know, we do this to us. So, so be your sister's keeper, be your brother's Keeper. So Absolutely. this is really nice. Approval, mm -hmm. validation. I'm loving it. Morogin J here. Karibu Sana. Good to see you here. So we were talking about Ikigai. Mm -hmm. Ikigai, the reason, the reason for being. You know that reason you wake up in the morning, that fulfillment. You don't want to pull over the, the duvet, the blanket or the bed sheet. You just want to get up and get on with it. You are so yeah. excited. Full mm -hmm. The four areas are what you love doing, and this is what we are here for today, mm -hmm. what the world needs. Now, I'm going to answer or speak on behalf of Lucy Njoroge that what she is doing is what the world needs. Convenience, a virtual assistant, and I know Jane, I know Jane Kuvuda is about to jump out of this <laughs> life and say, yes, 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 a virtual assistant, because she does just about the same oh, thing. excellent. Mm -hmm. So what the world needs is something that you need to plug into and connect with what you love to do. This is Ikigai. Look mm -hmm. it up. And then mm -hmm. what you're good at. So what is it that you're good at? You know, you may be good at something, not necessarily that you love it, but yeah. you could be good at something. And then what do you get paid for? So these yeah. four quadrants, they come together beautifully. It doesn't work overnight, guys. So you can try this at home, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> 
it needs work. Mm -hmm. It needs a lot of work. So Susan says, very true. Yes, when we're talking mm -hmm. about validation. Mm -hmm. Sheila says, I'm so prepared now to find my huge stack of stationery. She's got it in a <laughs> With it. Yes, definitely you must get on with it. Well, let us move on to measuring milestones. Uh, milestones mm -hmm. So you had an idea. Mm -hmm. You had no clue how this was going to pan out. And now this is you moving and, you know, you're chugging along just like an energizer battery. Things mm -hmm. are happening. Your yes. NGO calls you and starts saying, can you do things for us on part time? That customer walks in and suddenly your rent was paid for that month. It's snowballing. It's yes. Up. Mm -hmm. So tell us about this growth. Tell us about this growth and tell us about any business best practices that, that we can look out for. Okay, so like you rightly said, and I think we're all in agreement, nothing happens overnight. Mm -hmm. There were valleys, there was crying moments. I don't want to get out of bed. I'm closing that business. I'm done over, oh, oh, you know, but uh, <laughs> oh, we're talking like a good 10 years. Huh? And in fact, I remember it was last year, this 2020 was, like you said, a, a, if you didn't get to know yourself, you missed a fantastic opportunity. Yes. So I really did immerse myself in books this last year. And one of the books I read was another small little business book. Well, it's a faith book, but it's a business book um, about peaks and valleys. It's actually called Peaks and Valleys. Okay. And okay. it tells you they are inevitable. You will have high moments and you will have low moments. The mm. question is, how are you going to navigate that without getting into a crisis every time? So growth that now when there's an ebb, first of all, I must admit, one of the greatest um, indicators for growth for me in my business was experience. You learned how not to talk back to a client when you know you're right. You know, you've learned how to retreat and say, okay, uh, let's try and do it your way. Yes, for sure, yes. there was good experiences, bad experiences, painful experiences. And then there was those days when the check comes and you're even buying everybody dinner. <laughs> You know, and, 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 and to say speaking English. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so, of course, one of the milestones was definitely um, a better uh, financial platform. I definitely know that I grew financially for me, yes. and that unfortunately, that's how most people gauge themselves in business. There was also a definite growth in client base. I started mm -hmm. off doing a lot of um, one-man shows. Let's call it you know, yeah. with the, um, the virtual assist, assistant business, because you'd find somebody, um, I don't know, braids hair, but they realize I need to monetize this. So you're taking it from an idea into a, a money-making mm -hmm. machine. Yeah. Plan or map growth. So I found I was dealing with a lot of startups, individual startups, but they also didn't have resources. So I had to package myself very simply and very frugally so that mm -hmm. You still have, you know, what my one of my friends calls the bread and butter. Yeah, mm -hmm. the daily, everyday food. And in any business, you must maintain those two revenue streams. The bread and butter, which is your milk, bread, whatever, the 5K here, the 20K there. But then you also have to have a plan for the cash cow, the one that will buy you the new car or, you know, start to pay house payments. So for a long time, my business was driven by uh, the bread and butter. And it was good because it was always flowing. But then I realized I have to escalate this. I started yeah. I was dealing with now comp big companies that were in a space where they needed to recalibrate themselves. So we've done this for the last 10 years. We now need to upscale. We need to dis you know, downgrade, whatever it was. So there was change. So suddenly I found I was being called into spaces of change management. Mm. How about you're like, so I don't even have a degree for change management. But everything about me made the client comfortable enough to say, okay, you may not have the business qualifications and paperwork, but you understand me. So I'm going to ask you to help me lead me this. So it started with simple steps to the point where I'm even finding my product or my service um, offering has changed. So I have four main um, offerings right now. Before it was just the virtual assistants. So now I have a virtual assistant. I have the event management, I have the consultancy, and I have the, small, the soft skills training. Okay. All from the virtual assistant and having 
taken the time to sit, be there for your client, listen here. And, you know, like we even shared before, Lucy, learning to listen to them. For me, those were growth markers. Um, so I've said finances, client base, experience. Yeah. yeah. And, and of course, time, you start realizing time. when I go beyond this certain marker in terms of client base, in terms of finances, in terms of I haven't learned anything new, then I know it's time to upscale. Yeah. It's time to go back to the drawing board and recreate myself or even take time out to, you know, figure out what else can I do. So beyond those four main points, I discovered your client would want more. So it wasn't that you're selling services. They wanted you to walk this journey with them. So that's what a nanny does. So let me backtrack a little bit. Where did the dream nanny come from? So when a baby is born, you more obviously will engage a nanny. She yes. will feed that baby, change that nanny, bear the baby, burp the baby, you know, do everything. Literally, they're walking, you know, every step of the way. And as the yes. baby grows and the baby starts walking, the mom will take more time to walk with the baby instead of you walking with the baby, you know. So your, your responsibilities back start with, you know, with joy, which was what happens with any business. As the client grows, you start realizing, okay, what you need is not me now. Now you need an accountant. Now you need a PA. So I started, I start with drawing. Yeah. And then you get to the point where the baby goes to school and you're only there to do the basics, clean, make sure the baby's fed, play a little bit and go to bed. So you start to discover your commitment or your level of interaction begins to wane. So I had to repackage myself as well that when I engage me as your dream nanny or as your virtual assistant, it'll run for a period of like eight months. Okay, so because it'll take us through that growth. And if after eight months, you're still at the beginning, then we need to talk. So that's all for me, growth. Yeah. So, so what did that include? I started discovering. So somebody, I tell somebody, now you need an accountant. But I don't have an accountant. Where do I find an accountant? I never did accounting. So I started the next step of my growth plan, partnerships and collaborations. Partnerships and collaborations. Yes. Wow. So I'll call Lucy and say, Lucy, you're the one who talks, you're the marketing person. My client needs a marketing person. Help me. And you find it, when your partnerships are kosher, like what you and I do, you'll find the next time Lucy needs somebody, she won't even think twice, she'll give me a call. And those are the networks I find of value as opposed to the ones you pay for. <laughs> yeah. So for me, those are the growth plans. And I look back and realize I'm not a one man show anymore. Even if I was I had to, uh, let's say, travel on an emergency, there are people strategically placed in my life who would carry me through in my business, just as you would in your personal life. Yes. And then the third thing for me, and I think we were going to talk about that, was when you reach a certain place, you're grateful because you can see growth, you appreciate growth. The pressure of performance is lower because now you have a system and a process going, which is what I was talking about. I... I'm such a big proponent of there's no way you can do business without strong structures. My stationery, my two days of organizing stationery was the first part of my structure. Uh -huh. So that when somebody's calling me, I'm not looking for, let me find a pen, let me, let me get a paper. So yeah, if I, yes. So if your business is about hairdressing, then you better hold the, hold the clientele thingy of service and start first getting your space in order, get your machines in order, get your personnel, train them, have a culture. And a lot of people seem to think that that means having a business plan. You know that 30, 40 page business plan we like to write and then put in the drawer? Yeah. That doesn't yeah. work. It works when you're getting money from the bank. I'm not discounting that. <laughs> but when it comes to practically rolling your sleeves up to get your business going, yeah just need literally an exercise book you write down as you go along keep writing keep thinking and keep breathing in and every so often step back breathe read through everything discount what doesn't work or doesn't make sense anymore and you'll find you start delivering it and i'm not saying it's not important to have things written down you know in a proper form or function but you can get so stuck in there's a word that people use something paralysis Literally, organizing paralysis, where you never get to the point of starting. Mm. So you've gotten to a place where you've got your systems and your structures and your processes in place. And the processes I'm talking about, how does your client experience you? 
From the minute Lucy calls and says, hi, Lucy Njoroge, um, your number was given to me by Mary. How does she experience me until she's paid my check and I still call her and ask her, how's business doing? Can I have coffee? To my journey. Exactly. That's what your process should be like. That, so that I need to plan my process in terms of when Lucy calls me, this is what I would say. I would take her through a survey. I'll take her through, you see, as opposed to these policies we never open or look at, which are little manuals sitting in our offices. Okay, but now that you've got past that stage and you're beginning to toddle to run, the one thing, and I suggest this to everybody, is give back, give back. pay it forward. Okay. I love that. Uh -huh. Always pay it forward because anything pay it forward is not, you know, you'll think, okay, so I only made 10k this month. Imagine take that 10k or take your time, you know, your, your hours, and go and minister to somebody. Call somebody for a cup of coffee. Even if you're cooking it yourself with some mandazis at home, it doesn't have to be a big thing. But reaching out always makes room. Like we had said earlier, empties you out to be able to fill some more. Mm. So my giving back was, I was very passionate about books and about children. I have been terribly, terribly disappointed by the education system in Kenya. I went to Shags one time, and I'm going to really make this short. I went to our Shags, and one of my small nieces was, I asked her what she was choosing for her home free subjects and she told me um she's not even bothering because she knows she's not going to make it she's going to be her auntie's house help in nairobi so i asked her but tell me the subjects and she tells me computers so i said oh you have computers she said no we're given an a4 paper with a qwerty keyboard and that's how they do computers so started the journey for what <laughs> yes started the journey for what now became the books for big sport has been in existence for like seven years now what did and you call it again What's books the name of forward it? it's books, books forward book four number four and then word and oh. it's yeah it's a family initiative it's just us finding people to get donate books but you know you and by the way not old tattered books books that have been gently used being able to bring them together, we clean them, we label them, we cover them, and then just yeah. delivering them and setting up library structures. So what we do is we come into their school, if there's a room, we paint it, fix it up, put windows, shelves, and everything yeah. in collaboration with the school and the parents, and then we stock it up with libraries. Now the successful if I, ones- if I, if I could just stop you right there, just to, to share with the audience, on my 50th birthday, that's what I did. Uh, I reached out uh, to Lucy and that's what I gave back or, and I went in there with my family and for some of my family members, they had never seen the less fortunate in that particular light and it opened up their minds to, to CSR, to giving back, to paying for. So it is important that we expose, especially the younger generation who mm -hmm. feel self-entitled to this life that they're living and they don't realize how it is that they are very, very lucky to mm -hmm to have what they have. And there's a yeah. child somewhere who's using a, a QWERTY board on an A4 sheet for a right. computer. Just something mm -hmm. that can break your heart, mm -hmm. but then you need to pay it forward. Yes, yeah, so you were sharing with us um, uh, the paying it forward and the things, how this book forward works. Yes. Please go ahead. So just being, in fact, it does, it breaks your marketing budget in half. Being able to give back, you don't even have to talk about it because people say, oh, I know Lucy Njoroge, the one of Books Forward. You're like, no, actually, she's of this company. The Books Forward is a CSR. It yeah, gives you go. <laughs> exactly. And then also, because you're collaborating with those partners I told you about, you go back to them and say, I want 10K from you, I want 5K from you, or I just want books. So interestingly, so last year, 2020, crazy moment, I had, somebody had given me money and I needed books, but where are you getting books, you know, secondhand books at this point? And we were all on lockdown, current, uh, corona, blah, blah, blah. But one of my network people said, I called him and I said, I, I really need to get books, at least to prepare for 2021. And he said, oh, I know somebody. So this is another strong, powerful woman, a pastor's wife. And she homeschools her kids. And because she chose to go the homeschool way, she needed resources. She found books in Gikomba. Beautiful, brand new books. So she's in the business of selling books. So if anybody needs that, you know, you can get in touch with me and I can introduce you to her. Yeah. And she literally, she literally sold me each book at 100 bob. 100 bob. So you can imagine I multiplied my supply. So we have a whole lot of books ready to give out to a school in, in Kiambu, but 
the point is your network works not just to feed your business but your csr you're giving the, money. The, the, the network here is what is the business practices that we have all oh, thank you so much you have given us so many nuggets here lucy uh, you talked about uh, customer listening to your customer customer service mm -hmm. your experience your time you need to repackage recreate when you're listening to the customer partnerships and collaboration networks and structures i mean i could go on and on paying it forward does not have to be just money paying it forward could be of your time and yes. i only Day, that when we are successful, we can give of our time to mentor entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. to mentor the younger yeah. generation, because they need us. Uh, for mm -hmm. example, we were talking about this, uh, Lucy, when we were preparing the three types of business people. There's a business yes. person who buys a product wholesale and mm -hmm. sells it retail for profit. There's the one who buys it wholesale, comes and innovates it, mm -hmm. makes it something different. For instance, you buy fruits, you make juice, you sell juice. Sell. Yeah. Like that. That's mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. So you sell innovation uh, at a profit. Mm -hmm. And then there's the infopreneur, which is what we are doing. We mm -hmm. are learning a certain way of doing things. And then we are selling it. We are training yeah. and we are making money from this. I mm -hmm. mean, you are a virtual assistant and this is where you're falling into, infopreneur. This is the way we should be going today. This is where the money is today. Yeah. So ladies, and anybody who's listening, when you are thinking about going into business, uh, Lucy has given us some ideas, have an idea of something that you already love doing. She took mm -hmm. what she had. She talked to you about secretarial duties. Mm -hmm. She took what she had. She's a virtual assistant today. She's no, a actually, I'm an admin consultant. <laughs> there you go. This is what she's doing. And it's got a fancy name, but if you break it down, she is talking about what she did so many years ago. It's convenience. And today, this is what is needed. People do need this. So Ikigai then reminds us what it is that uh, is actually the reason to wake up. It's what you love doing. Lucy has covered that. What the world needs, Lucy has covered that. It's that convenience what you're good at she's good at organizing things giving you smart solutions and what you get paid for she's getting paid to be a virtual assistant to bring order into your life to call herself the way she does as a business dream nanny who wouldn't love that and then she's talked about giving back but you know I was going through your website, Lucy, and there's something that you put there, your motto, and I loved it. It said, I can be changed by what happens to me, but I refuse to be reduced by it. I will repeat that. Absolutely. I can be changed by what happens to me. Read, Corona, mm -hmm. COVID, pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then she says, but I refuse to be reduced by it. She has refused to be reduced by, she has recalibrated, recreated, she has repackaged. And this is a quote or a motto from Maya Angelou. So what have you done, ladies and gentlemen? What is it that you have done different in this year and actually come out and discovered something that you love doing? You may be good at it, but the best thing is that Ikigai says, that there is that sweet spot where you find mm -hmm. fulfillment. Yeah. Susan has jumped right out. Oh, Randy, Megard, great to see you here. Welcome on to Tuesday Talks at three. You've caught us at the tail end, but welcome. Susan says, yes, doing what you love consistently. I love that word, Susan, yeah. consistently. Only makes you better at what you do every day so true and especially when things are not going your way it gives you strength too to go through those difficult times word preach susan word i tell you, I tell you word you know there are days when i get up and the words fail me doesn't mm -hmm. look like it's a reality but words do fail me but because i do this every other day because I do this every other day, I can now wing it, literally. It sounds bad when I say wing it. No, but if somebody, no. calls, <laughs> if somebody calls me right now and says to me, Lucy, we have a, a board meeting and we want someone to talk about emotional intelligence. 
Before, I would have looked at them and said, seriously, you're telling me now for now. I mean, hello, ducks in a row. (laughs) But today I was like, I'll be like, okay, fantastic. What's my my target audience? Because I'm doing it every day consistently, I'm able to run with it. So on those difficult times, like Susan is pointing out, when I am feeling dry and somebody calls up on me, I am just, I'm present. I'm there and I can get there. So we've got someone, uh, Morugi Nje here saying, one of my favorite quotes, well done, Lucy and Lucy. Oh, thank you. You love the Maya Angelou quote, thank you. Sheila says, huge pointers for great entrepreneurship. I've picked from Lucy Njoroge, okay, his first, to constantly scribble down my business standards and structures and processes. Uh-huh. And so, she even showed you a book, eh? a book. And second, to pay it forward, oh, that is powerful. Yes, to pay it forward. This is so simple to do and you will. And it doesn't have to be about money, Sheila. Yes. The networks that Lucy has talked to us about, the collaboration she has talked to us about, and we are running out of time, Lucy. I just have one minute to go and I never leave my audience without takeaways. So can you just share with us three takeaways that okay. you have from doing what you love and getting paid for it? I'm going to run through it, so forgive me for that. So first and foremost, I will tell you that your dream is inside you. Whatever it is you need to do, you're not going to find it outside. It's inside you. It's in your gut. So don't, like we've said earlier on, don't try looking for people or what everyone else is doing. If it's making tea and you make a good cup of tea, then just make that the business. Yeah? Find nice teacups, nice teapots. Just work on that. That's who you are and that's what you do. Yeah? And here's the beautiful thing. If it doesn't work, recalibrate. Yeah? Sorry about that. So the second thing is, I'm sorry. The second thing is keep it real and authentic. Sorry, guys. Yes. So uh, keep it real and authentic. It's a solo marathon. You're doing it alone. You're not running against anybody. And especially where Lucy and I are at, you're looking back and thinking, seeing all these young 20 something year old girls and you're thinking, I can't imagine that's not your business. Keep your eyes on the prize, literally. Okay. Yeah. It's, and, and there's no, there's no, no, there's no rule that says you can't go west and then come back east. Do what it takes. Keep it simple, authentic, keep going. And the thing when I keep saying keep it simple, if you have processes, things will run smoothly and they can run even without you. Yeah. Last step, I'm saying, take, it'll take everything you've got. It'll take your sleep. It'll take your money. It'll take some of your relationships. <laughs> yeah. It'll take your self-esteem. It'll take everything you've got. So all I'm going to say, and I think um, Susan said it, you've just got to dig in, commitment, consistent. Just keep digging in. Just keep going. I'm sure you've seen those little memes where two guys are digging down, you know, with, with uh, shovels, and one just stops short of his miracle, and the other <laughs> one goes down. Yes. Keep digging in. (laughs) Thank you so much for sharing those takeaways. So you've heard it from the business nanny. How else do I call her? The business nanny. You've heard it from her. Your dream is in your gut. Listen, guys, keep it real and authentic. This is a solo race. It's not about everybody else behind you. They can come in as partnerships and collaborations, but this is your race. Run it, run it. It is going to take everything you've got. Dig in get the best that you can out of yourself so you've heard it from me and i just love how she has put it out thank you so much for sharing your story with us lucy i am i am so appreciative of your time your energy your vigor your authenticity you know and everything you've shared with us is so relatable and so easy to do we need to discuss about that business plan 30 40 yeah. years being kept in the, <laughs> the one that's in your drawer <laughs> for another day but i can understand the paper and writing it in that book there i can relate next week next week my dear audience we will be having another lady sharing her story on what she loves and getting paid for it and i really would love for you to be with us remember to like our page to receive all our updates so that we can help build each other that is my purpose to help build each other but until then be kind to yourself. Bye-bye.